Life is filled with secrets, and in a world that is constantly at war, we've all become compartmentalized. Nowhere is this more evident than in these secret cities, whose very existence was kept a mystery in order to achieve clandestine national security goals. Number 1. Los Alamos Of course, Los Alamos is not secret anymore. It's a well-known part of the narrative of how the U.S. constructed the first atomic bomb and used it to end World War II. But before it was dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, it had to be designed, assembled, and tested. For that, the Army built a secret city from scratch, established in 1943 in the high altitudes of the New Mexico mountains. Los Alamos thrived on secrecy, with General Leslie Groves establishing a paranoid control grid where all phone calls were monitored, mail was read for signs of sabotage or spying, and the base even attempted to limit fraternization among the scientists and civilian personnel who were secretly stationed there. Employees were restricted from discussing any aspect of their work, and the project was highly compartmentalized. J. Robert Oppenheimer, the eccentric physicist in charge of the Manhattan Project's nuclear research, was appalled by General Grove's extreme secrecy and tried to minimize the surveillance culture, but to no avail. In hindsight, many believe that Grove's level of security actually hindered and slowed down the completion of the bomb because everyone was so compartmentalized that very few even had a meaningful idea of what they were trying to accomplish. It was referred to by some as the Hill and known in military communications as Site Y, but it was absolutely off limits for the general public. Even today, Los Alamos maintains an air of quasi-secrecy. Although tourists are invited to visit the city's Bradbury Science Museum and learn about the atomic bomb, the Los Alamos National Research Laboratory, just a few blocks over, continues its highly classified national security work. And signs are everywhere in the city reminding you of the careful watch that is placed over the 12,000 or so inhabitants and all visitors. The 40s era watchtower and guard shacks remain a visible reminder of the previous era of secrecy, while we witnessed modern day extra security stationed in several places on the main roads, at gates, and bridges. We saw a family van pulled over with police searching through every nook and cranny of their car. Cars pulling over a white <laughs> minivan of family. I guess we're lucky. We need to get the hell out of here. And we were pretty sure we were being followed more than once during our short visit to this secret city. Wow. That is creepy. <laughs> you think that was the APB for us? And it wasn't just Los Alamos. The Army and the secret science enclaves also had secret facilities situated in Oak Ridge, Tennessee and Hanford, Washington to enrich uranium and plutonium. Number two is Ozorsk, but it was known under a code name, City 40. This secret city was founded in 1947 in the Soviet Union, just as the Cold War was intensifying. Its purpose was to house the workforce for the neighboring Mayak plant and secretly produce weapons-grade plutonium for Soviet Russia. Considered a closed city, Ozorsk didn't even appear on maps, and families who lived there weren't even allowed to talk about where they lived when they visited friends. Instead, they had to use code names or lie about where they were from. The city had a closed-knit, almost cult-like atmosphere among the 15,000 or so inhabitants, who reinforced the special and patriotic secret mission of their off-the-map town. Children tested each other's loyalty, and harsh penalties were enacted for perceived traitors who might give away one of Mother Russia's most important secrets. Historians attribute hastiness to prevail in the Cold War for the total lack of safety precautions apparent inside City 40, the Mayak plant, and the surrounding area, which was widely contaminated with nuclear waste materials. In 1957, a nuclear waste storage tank exploded, releasing more radioactive material than Chernobyl. However, the incident was covered up and kept secret. Ozorsk remains inhabited today by some 90,000 residents, but is still closed off to the rest of the world. However, the 2016 documentary City 40 was filmed undercover there and revealed its story to the world for the first time. Number three, Wunsdorf. A derelict city falling to ruin. Wunsdorf in Zossen, Germany, some 25 miles from Berlin, was once a forbidden secret Soviet city and the largest Red Army camp outside of the USSR borders. 
Some 75,000 men once marched down the now decaying streets of what was then called Little Moscow, where a theater, an Olympic-sized swimming pool, statues of Lenin, and murals to the great space race with the United States have frozen the Cold War in time. During World War I, POWs were held at Wunsdorf, and in the lead-up to World War II, the city became the headquarters for the German armed forces. Nazis used Wunsdorf underground bunkers, built with meter-thick walls for secret communications. And years later, the city was still generally off-limits, and locals had to get permission to enter. Shut down five years after the Berlin Wall fell in 1989, people were in such a hurry to leave. Families left their pets behind and over 98,000 rounds of ammo. Today, for a small fee, you could take a tour of the Forbidden City, and if you have enough money, you could even buy the place. In November 2015, it was put up for sale at 3 million pounds and a promise to restore Wunsdorf to its former glory. Number four is known only as 404. China exploded its first nuclear bomb on October 16, 1964, but only after decades of working in complete secrecy. In order to accomplish this feat, China didn't just build a top secret city, but declared an entire swath of desert a national security secret in the 1950s. In the remote reaches of far west China, the Gobi Desert was the chosen location where the People's Republic of China successfully assembled its first atomic bomb. Three generations of Chinese people were sent to live and work in the city, which did not even have a name, and has come to be known as 404. Coincidentally, the same as the error code that tells an internet user when a requested web page is not found. Not found on any Chinese map, the city was built from scratch on the desert floor. Now apartment buildings, a vinegar factory, a rundown restaurant known as the Old Granny Hot Pot, two identical kindergartens designed by the Russians, a central city square with a statue of Chairman Mao, and Nuclear City Park with its rusty rides, fountain, and pavilion, all sit decaying in silence. Photographer Lee Yong grew up in 404 and returned last year to document the city. He said you could walk from one side of town to the other in just 15 minutes. Thus, the town had no buses, taxis, or even traffic lights. All residents of 404 were relocated in 2005, and today the empty city slowly rots in solitude. 404's only remaining residents appear to be sheep who have taken over the old nuclear park zoo. Number five, Camp Century. This is the story of Camp Century. A secret city under the ice in Greenland. In 1960, the United States officially launched Camp Century with cooperation from the Denmark government and NATO. It was a highly publicized effort to build a nuclear-powered Arctic research station some 28 feet underground. Camp Century is buried below the surface of this ice cap. In this remote setting, less than 800 miles from the North Pole, Camp Century is a symbol of man's unceasing struggle to conquer his environment inside the uninhabitable 6,000-foot-deep ice cap of Greenland. It was an expensive and unprecedented effort that involved carving out a massive system of tunnels in the ice and then constructing an underground city meant to house men and equipment, officially in an effort to better understand the challenges of living in such an extreme cold environment. But what the U.S. Army never told Denmark was that its real mission under the clandestine project Ice Worm was to build an underground network of mobile nuclear missile launch sites designed to span a vast area of more than 52,000 square miles, approximately the size of Arkansas. With potential launch sites every four miles, there would be thousands of mobile nuclear launch sites, putting Moscow in direct range, while the Soviets would be theoretically incapable of guessing which of the thousands of weapon sites an attack could be launched from. To avoid surprise disaster, some of our aircraft must always be in the sky or on the alert, carrying nuclear weapons. We, the American people, understand and accept this necessity for our survival. But the project was officially closed down just five years later, after a scientific study found that the ice cap was shifting so rapidly that it threatened to collapse their expansive system of tunnels in just two years. 
Today, the melting ice core is again threatening to unleash one of Camp Century's other secrets, a huge cache of buried nuclear and toxic waste that could soon be exposed to above ground life. Well, there are really are three objectives. Uh, the first one is to uh, test out a number of promising new concepts in polar construction, and the second one is to uh, provide a really practical field test of this new nuclear plant. And finally, uh, we're building Camp Century to provide a, a good base here in the interior of Greenland where the uh, scientists can carry on their R&D activities. Now, does this have any immediate defense aspects? Well, not an operational mission, no. It's a, it's a big experiment, an R&D project. Camp Century was officially abandoned completely by 1966, and Project Ice Worm was suspended. But considering that the U.S. Army kept its real mission secret from Denmark as well as the rest of the world, who's to say that the project ever really ended, or that there aren't similar sites and secret installations all across the world? Number six is located in India, or not, depending on who you ask. Secret nuclear cities are not just a relic of the past. Word is India is in the process of building a top secret nuclear city in the Chalkir region where large-scale excavation for something began in 2012. Although the Indian government has officially denied these claims as a quote, figment of Pakistani imagination, two senior scientists involved with India's atomic energy sector have acknowledged the new complex's existence with retired chairman of the Atomic Energy Commission, R.K. Sinha, recently quoted as saying, we should be proud that we have the technology for uranium enrichment. There are countries like Iran who have been blamed for clandestinely acquiring the technology and the Pakistanis have been accused of stealing from somewhere. We have done it ourselves. Let us be proud of it. Nothing else matters. According to foreign policy, India has already received roughly 4,914 tons of uranium from France, Russia, and Kazakhstan, and the nation has agreements with Canada, Mongolia, Argentina, and Namibia for additional shipments. A new study published by the Institute of Strategic Studies Islamabad concluded India now has sufficient material and capabilities to build somewhere between 356 and 492 nuclear bombs. In the past two to three months alone, India has signed more than 50 arms deals totaling a whopping $3 billion, including emergency defense deals with Russia, France, and Israel. Kind of makes you wonder, does the country know something we don't? These are just a few examples on a very long list of facts that are kept from a compartmentalized public in a world seemingly at permanent war. So just consider this the next time somebody tells you there can't be any big conspiracies because how could they get that many people to be in on it and lie about it? Obviously it happens all the time.